Good evening, everyone, and I'm sorry. I apologize for not posting something for you guys. Um, for the last week, I've been playing with my Google Cardboard, and I was working on a project to get Skyrim to play on my goggles so I could have a 3D world looking around, playing. It's not working out so well, so I think I'm going to scrap the project. Um, other than that, I have watched the anime Lane, uh, the serial experiments. Basically binge-watched it. Uh, on Google Cardboard, watching it in like a movie theater type situation. So, uh, thank you guys for 916 subscribers. Wow. I'm about to hit 1,000 subscribers, and at the rate that it's going, it's probably going to be in about a month and a half. I'm going to need to work on getting my um, 1,000 subscriber special going. But until then, I'm going to answer a quick question. Could you make a bot for sending emails? The answer to your question is, yes, it's possible. No, it's not easy. If you want an answer to it, there is a great one right here. Uh, this is an AU3 script for sending emails. And all you have to do is Google that. Send email with AutoIt script. That'll answer your question for the AutoIt part. What I suggest that you do is learn PowerShell. All right? PowerShell is like command prompt on steroids. This thing is hype, like it's hopped up so much and there's so much that you can do with it. So yes, you do see my password on there. Okay. Super secret password. I know it's huge secret, but you know what? It's going to be changed by the time you guys see it anyway. So, um, what this is, is get you get you. Okay. You've got three windows. You've got your scripting window up here at the top. Uh, oh, and the way you get to this is you go to start, you type out PowerShell, and you're looking for the ISE, which is the, the environment. Um, there's another one that you can run just called PowerShell, and it looks like this. Basically, this is what normal PowerShell used to be, and then they added the like actual developer tool to it. Get out of that, get out of that. That same console window is down here at the bottom of your IE, uh, IE, ISE. Um, what you can do is type git help if you need any kind of help, all right? And it will show you the commands that you can do for different things. Uh, the other cool thing that they added to the new PowerShell, as you start typing, it will IntelliSense. Git help, it'll start narrowing it down. Git object, git WMI object, git ad account authorization like wow so the first thing that i do is i say connections equals netstat minus na what this does and i'll show it to you real quick inside command prompt if i type out netstat minus na it just shows me a huge list of current connections current ip addresses inside and outside uh, and what i did is i wrote this script a while ago to show me whenever somebody remoted into my daughter's machine and the reason i did that is because my daughter was running the um back end for the website for my old website so what i did is i made sure that if there was any kind of remote connection or any kind of login attempt to that machine it would send me an email immediately and that was through the login script whenever you first log into a computer anyhow getting into too much detail I'm going to walk you through what these are. The first one, connections equals netstat minus na. It says, take this command, netstat minus na, drop it into connections variable. And then, email from sissy at haskins.ninja. I'm actually going to just change this to server at haskins.ninja. That's the email from. Email to is going to be codeprimate at gmail.com. This could be anybody that you want. Subject equals someone just logged in. Um, let's change this to test. This is a test body, and you can basically type what you want in here. Um, oh, by the way, I did this little trick where you do a plus, and then you actually hit the enter key. I could have done character 10, character 13. That way it, it presses enter to come down for a carriage return line feed. I didn't. I just pressed enter. I know, I'm lazy. Then, uh, the next command, this right here, connections. If I type just connections by itself, it'll spit out what that variable is, and that's line for line. So what this does, I'm using a pipe right here, 
and that says pipe this output into for each object. Oops. For each object. And then inside these brackets right here, it's a loop. So my body, which is currently netstat plus this, is going to output whatever that is. Oh, uh, by the way, the dollar sign underscore is the current result. So the current object spit it out. Oh man, I probably lost you guys. All right, what this is, this is a loop for each object inside connections. Okay, so each one of these lines, it's going to say take the current variable body and it's going to add the output. Does that make sense? So each one of these loops is one of these lines. So next line, next line, next line, enter, 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 enter. That way I get a nice um, enter on each one of my entries. I probably could have just dropped it in there, but it'd all be smashed in one line. Next, SMTP server, this is a variable, equals SMTP at gmail, uh, SMTP dot gmail dot com. By the way, if you want to learn more about SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, um, Gmail is now using RFC or RS, RCF encryption uh, on port 587. Um, Windows has ways of allowing you to create these objects by themselves, which is what I did here. I didn't want to get into the whole hello, ELO, um, sending the, the key, bringing back the key, communicating TLS. That's for deeper level programming. We're not doing that. We're doing some high level programming here. So my SMTP client, I say I want a new object. It's going to be uh, net.mail.smtp client, and I'm going to send it my server which is that, and then I'm going to say I'm running on port 587, which is Gmail's secure SMTP. Uh, once we have our object, we can now send uh, issue commands to it. So I'm saying SMTP client dot enable SSL. That is enable secure socket layer, which is certificates. And this is the, the top layer stuff that I was telling you in the other botting videos. Like this is really hard to decrypt. So if somebody were listening in between me and Google trying to get my certificates and stuff like that, it's almost impossible to break. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's really hard to break. What I just did is I said my client is going to use SSL. Done. So um, next one is SMTP client dot credentials. I'm going to have to pass it my username and my password. To do this, I'm going to create a new object because we're using the .NET framework system.net.network credentials. The username is going to be Heath Haskins, and my password is super secret password. So again, this is not secure inside your script. This is only going to be secure if you like encrypt that or if you prompt for it. All right, the reason I didn't prompt for it here is because I don't know why I didn't encrypt it here. I probably could have encrypted it. But this is to auto log in and run, send me an email every single time. So not a secret. Next is going to be SMTP client dot send email from email to subject and body. All right. And to show you how fast this works, I'm going to pull up my email. I think I'm ready. So this is going to be our email test F5. Scream it, it will be saved. Yes, we want to save. Save it. Boop, popped up. Done. It's already logged in and sent the email. Boom. Uh, actually, not boom. Get back here. There we go. Right there. Oh my gosh! I just destroyed my green screen. Ugh. Whoa, it's a horrible effect. This is a test, heathaskinsgmail.com, two code primate, all that good stuff. Oh no, refocus, refocus, refocus. No, I done messed up my filter. Hold on. Um, you can use this to create an email, send an email, all kinds of good stuff. And what you can do with um, Autoit is create this in a PS1 script run that as a shell command from your Autoit program. 
I don't suggest you save your passwords inside there. So what you could essentially do is put in like variable username or password to read host enter PCID. So what this is, like it will prompt you. That's gonna be how to send an email um, using PowerShell, not AutoIt. What was my next question? You should make a C-sharp tutorial. Yes, I should. What are some good books to read on learning the code? That's going to be from Don Westcott. He commented, good job. What are some good books to read for learning coding? Codes, www.google.com. I recommend C Sharp because C Sharp is going to use .NET programming language. It's also going to use a high-end programming language and it's going to be very universal. You're going to be able to program in multiple different things. C Sharp um, programming dot pdf download c sharp book and pdf and you can find tons of these uh, if you hit one of these pdf files and it takes you out to a website where you're supposed to like purchase it or something like that back out go find something else there are too many free programming books out there for you to go and, and like pay for one the thing is you're gonna have to read through it um, if you want you can right click on the link save as and put it on your desktop or transfer it over to your phone. Um, and yeah, I mean, this goes for anything. Um, Blender tutorial or Blender3D.pdf. There we go. Introduction to Blender 3D, a book for Blender. Uh, Blender Basic 4th Edition. Let's hit that one. Blender Basics 4th Edition. Ooh, look, I got some little buttons. Little buttons right there. Minus plus button. Ah, well. <laughs> Just messing around. Well, that's taken forever to load. Once you've found a book that you really like or really enjoy, um, go and download it. Read it at nighttime. Read it while you're in the bathroom. Read it on your breaks. Just read. But don't just read. Start playing with the program because the only way you're gonna get better is by actually doing the code. If you don't know what to put in the code, start by doing the examples. Start by going in and looking at the listings. The fastest way for me to learn is reference manuals. C sharp reference dot PDF. The complete reference guide by Herbert Schlitzful dot PDF. Oh, that's, that's 3.0. I don't want that anyway. Let's do 4.0. I'm locked up. Oh, anyhow, the fastest way for me to learn is by looking at a reference sheet. Um, if I know what commands I can throw at a language, then the better I, off I am. If I know what variables it's looking for, what the basic structure is, that's how fast, like, that's how fast I'm going to learn it. Oh, here we go. A programmer's guide to C-sharp, fifth and fourth edition. Here we go. This thing's 400 and 443 pages long. It tells you what bytes and floats and everything are. Public static void main point my pointer equals x and y values. Like, very good references. And this was just a couple of seconds of searching the internet, finding the PDFs, and downloading them. If you want to learn Python, python.pdf. Hands-on Python tutorial by Dr. Andrew Harrington. Download Python tutorial PDF version. Green Tees Press. Uh, auto it programming dot PDF. Learn to script with auto it 3.0 repository root me. Uh, this is 106 pages long. This right here is a good guide. Good, good, good guide. So that's how to go find some good books, uh, and finding out more about programming languages, stuff like that. Um, oh, something else. If you're interested in creating games, I recommend checking out Blender Game Engine. Introduction to Blender Game Engine. Go and watch a couple of tutorials, make a couple of games, just get used to the programming language. Um, Blender uses Python, Python programming language. So you can use Blender. The other one I would say is Unity 3D. As long as you're not going to be making like corporate games out of this thing, and most likely you're not going to unless you start working for a big company, um, unless you're like really independent and got a lot of free time on your hands. But 
this you can go and download for free. Um, you can create games, you can create and share games. Uh, they've got a lot of tutorials with Learn right here at the top. It will actually walk you through tutorials. Um, I've made a couple of these, and you can see examples of them on my website, Haskins.Ninja. Go out there, grab these for yourselves. Last part, I was going to show you Blender. I use Blender for my video edits. And what I do is this default scene that's here, I don't even mess with it. I set my, de uh, my scene to video editing. And then this top window, I just switch over to properties like that. And I stretch this over a little bit like that. And then I stretch this down a little bit like that. And then I pull this down because I usually don't need more than one or two things. Okay, so now that we've got our scene basically set up, I'm going to switch this to 30 frames per second, which is my standard. Um, that's what I do my recordings in. 1920 by 1080 at 100%. That will render me a full HD video. Come down here. Um, we are going to output, and I'm going to select my... Uh, X split, no, I'm going to want to go up one, just my videos folders. And this is going to be my output test.mp4. And I do mp4 because Microsoft doesn't. Standards, right? All right. We're going to switch this over to MPEG. Encoding is going to be mp4. Codec, uh, leave that alone. MP2 should be fine. And then audio codec is going to be MP3, just like that. Uh, Bitrate and everything else I leave alone. So now that that's done, we can save it if we want to. Uh, I'm not going to save this one just because I'm, I'm doing a tutorial real quick. I'm going to open up my music first. And here's a couple of things that I've grabbed. Um, so you, you guys have heard that before. I'm just going to grab that and drop it in. Boop, like that. Now, as you can see here, it's kind of off, and that's because... Hold on. There we go. It's a little off from the end, and that's because of this size up here. The end frame is only at 250. I can stretch that out or down, and you can see it change a little bit. The next thing I like to do is I'll select that um, sound file, and I want to draw waveforms. This way I can see the music. And we can actually zoom this in a little bit. There we go. So now you can hear that music if I hit play. Sorry, that sounds a little bit loud. Uh, the other thing I like to do is come in here to playback audio scrubbing. This way I can hear the sound. That way you can hear it. Um, yeah, so next, let's go back over to my documents. And what we can do is go to pictures and... Yes, there's an anonymous photo. Leave it alone. All right, so I'll just grab this, drop it in there. Wherever your um, cursor's at, that's where the file's going to get dropped at. Like this. Grab it. I'll pull it over there to one, like that. So now we've got the showing it on top. If I were to take another one and drop it in above that, uh, say Justin, like that, Justin is going to be on top. That's because, imagine the camera being on the topmost layer, looking down. Um, that's where the, the layers come in. If I were to grab this, G, pull it up to the top, it becomes the topmost one. G, pull that down to the bottom. Now, what's kind of cool is, like with Justin's picture here, I can take, come over here to the side. Oh, come here. Stretch this out a little bit. And I'm going to do a... Overdrop and image offset and image crop. And now I can move that around a little bit and it becomes like a little stamp 
on the video itself. Yeah. Press home to maximize anything to it, the actual window size. Like, I'm down here, I hit home. It'll stretch it out to the, the make it right. Cool. So now I can move his face around, and it's going to play on top of... Wow, that is really loud. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyhow. Yeah. That's how to... I put all my stuff together. Um, here, let's go back over. Let's grab a video real quick. Uh, videos. Here we go. This is a good one. So I don't need the audio in this one. We'll just close that out. Grab this, put it down there. We're going to X delete that. Oh, the, what I'm doing is I'm right clicking. I press X. Do you want to delete? Okay, done. Grab this, pull over like that. All right. And we'll make that our in frame right there at the last of that music. Just like that. So if we watch the video. Now, notice up here at the top left hand side, it says I'm only getting about 14 to 15 cycles per second or frames per second, and that's because the speed. Um, what you can do to correct that is right click on the video file itself, come over here to the right, look for proxy time scales or proxy time code, and you're going to select um, proxy 25% overwrite and rebuild. So that right there at the bottom, you saw it rebuilding real quick. Now hit the little plus button up here at the top right. And we're going to proxy size at 25. It's going to look blurry in the preview. But that's okay. We can, now, we can now scrub around here. Let me turn that scrubbing off. We can now scrub around and there's no delay uh, at all because we're only showing 25%. It rebuilt keyframes at 25% the size. Uh, when you do your final render, it will look fine because it's going to go back to the original file to do the renders themselves. All right, so what this allows us Perfect. So, I've got a little bit of a run right there. Well, let's switch this to GPU, compute. There we go. I didn't have that on GPU. So, um, yeah, that's that's nice, short little intro. Um, let's actually go and cut this top one. So I'm going to select it. Shift K. Oops. Control Z. Control Z. Shift K. That's not a cut that I want. Control Z. What if I just K? There we go. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to get rid of this first part just by X, close, pull this over. Right there. Like that. Okay, so that shows you how to cut. Um, you can come through here and do K, K, K. K, K, K. Cut this thing all up. K, K, like that. And then you could take those portions and like grab them, move them around, wherever you want them to go. And it doesn't ruin the original file because the original file is still intact. It's just grabbing stamps and cuts of where you're going to. Um, you do that with a lot of files, you're going to start running into problems just because it's going to cache all the files together. Oop, there we go. So, let's go ahead and render this. Oh, render. Um, and if you watch up here at the top, oh, render, animation. It's at 6%. I'm going to cut here and show you what it looks like at the end. There we go. Okay, so it's finished rendering. 
Let's go ahead and switch back over to our video folder. Video folder, right there. And let's see here, it should be my output test. That one right there. I think that's it. Hold on, right click. We're gonna do open with VLC. <laughs> So you can use Blender to create intros. Um, if you want to, you could uh, render scenes in 3D, bring those over to do the video editing, do all kinds of cool stuff with them. Uh, like I said, I was working with some um, the the headsets, doing some 3D gaming, and trying to play, just get the thing to work. And I got some recordings, but the like the project overall is just just not strong enough. So. I'm going to kill it out, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, I encourage you, go and get books. Go and download books. Go and find books. Do your own thing. Learn. That's what this is all about. I'm not going to make the bots for you. I want you to go learn the bots. I will help you along any path that I can try to help you with. And thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe down below. Have a good night.